Hey there, my inky fingered friends. It's Sharon Leska here from My Crafty Greetings. And I am finally bringing you that video from the teaser. You just saw our good friend, Catherine Kelly's craft rooms and I am casing her curtains. Can you case curtains? I'm casing curtains. I love her craft room. Well, I'm kind of casing her craft room, but we're gonna start off with the curtains. And uh, I've got gesso here and I've got some multi matte medium from Liquitex, both of them from Liquitex. Good pair of scissors, some water, and a little bowl, and coffee filters. Grab your coffee filters back out of the trash. It doesn't matter if they got some glitter on them or some glue on them, they'll work just fine. This is a great easy way to make some really funky florals to add to your cards. So I'm folding this up in a very specific way. You're gonna fold it into four and then you're gonna fold it into four again and you just need to keep track of where your center point is because that is going to be the center point for all four flowers that we're about to make. So this should take you back to your snowflake making days. Basically we're going to make cuts and whatever cuts we make it is going to multiply them um, as we open this up. So what I'm doing is essentially cutting out here a heart shape with a very very deep center because I'm wanting to make sure that it looks flower like and you'll see how those petals end up making four petals total. And then out of that, four flowers total. So you're gonna use these as two layered flowers. So you're gonna get two flowers total and we're gonna fold and make another style of flower here. So folding into four. Now if it's easier for you to deal with a square and folding it into eight, you can just nip off the rounded part here and then unfold it and fold it up again as though you're folding it in eight squares so um, anyways I've got this one here and I'm just folding it again so you can kind of see close up how I match that up and I'm just basically looking for that triangle to um, cut across all those odd pieces so that I can get as much as I can um, but cut the extra off and I'm gonna do that here just so that we can see a little bit more clearly so there's that extra waste that would have been cut off had we made it into a complete square so I've got a pencil here and I'm just gonna draw uh, the petals on because this is a different style of petal so one is going to be a petal that is folded so it's going to be half the petal and then the next piece that I'm drawing on is the whole petal and once you cut this out and you might try it and end up looking at it and going okay that's a crazy wonky looking flower Sharon what the and then once you take the flowers and you layer them over top of each other it is not going to matter as a matter of fact if you don't even cut this smoothly it's not going to matter the whole point that you do need to make sure that you do is make sure that the V cut is deep enough here between the petals uh, so that they actually look petal like not blob like <laughs> So you'll see here as I'm unfolding them. So this gives us six petals. Um, and yes, one's a little bit bigger, but once you layer them over top of each other, they're gonna look perfectly fine. So now I had a uh, multi matte medium and I'm putting that on this one. And this will give you a little bit of a translucent petal. And then this is the white gesso. You can also use white acrylic paint. That'll work just fine too. Basically though, what I'm doing is I'm painting from the middle of the flower out, but not hitting the very edge. And that's because we want the very edge to absorb more color than the rest of the flower. And that'll give you a really cool variation. You don't have to paint these on your hand. You can leave them down on your work surface. Make sure you're using something that you don't mind if it gets mucky and move your flowers about so that they don't get stuck down. So those are the two blues I'm using and those are the two kind of ready pinks that I'm using. And this is my box looking still half decently clean. <laughs> so once I get using this box, boy, it ends up being a mess. So you're just gonna dip your brush in. Now some people like to spray these or like to do a, a drop of water on them. I just moisten my brush and have a little go at them. Uh, give them a good lathering up and go ahead and get them all mixed together. And so for the first little bit, I'm mixing uh, these two colors together. And then what I'm doing is just pulling in a little bit of blue so that I can make these with a nice purpley center. I'm also going to mix up my blue batch as well. So this is a very brilliant blue and then I'm mixing it with the navy blue just to knock the brilliance out of it. 
because uh, although it's cool to have it brilliant, it's going to be a little too bright. And uh, so I made two patches there. One is so that I can have a, a good intensity and one is so that I can have a watery intensity. So now I'm painting the edges and this is that multi matte medium. And you can kind of see here how uh, the color is differentiating between um, where the multi matte medium ends and where it's on top of it. And uh, so just give it all a good coating all the way around on the outside and then I'm picking up that purpley part that I made with the blue there for the center and just scribbling out a center. Do these all loose. You know, not every flower is exactly the same and exactly perfect in nature. There is a lot of variation. Well, the other thing too is you wanna turn these over so that your painted side is down. Um, you know, the the uh, coffee filter itself won't be completely saturated with the mediums that we're using and that will allow the color to stick into the little kind of filtery bits, if you will. So I just added a darker edge, a more intense edge, so I mixed up the really light stuff uh, with extra water to make it more transparent and then the other stuff is the dark stuff and then I went with some dark navy blue and just tapped around the edge and now I'm also going around and tapping in that deep kind of cherry color on the edges of these they kind of look like pansies but they got the wrong color or the wrong color Ugh, the wrong number of leaves but anyways these aren't looking so ugly now and once I pair them up my homely looking flowers and start to actually look like something cool and this is why I'm telling you once you get the paint on them it's not gonna matter they are going to be some funky awesome florals so now I'm taking up a little piece of um, ATG here if you've got a glue dot you can throw one of those little mini glue dots on there um, and stick your layers together just to get them stuck down and then what I do is I actually pinch through the layers uh, with my nails and uh, grab that little glue dot and I just do a, a little bit of a twisting around the back and that's going to help add dimension. So I'm doing the same thing to this one, pu putting a little piece in the center there and uh, the other thing that you can do, so I've got that all kind of bunched up there, the other thing you can do is grab some reversible tweezers, these are some very sharp ones, <laughs> and just give it a little twist around the end of the tweezers and that'll give you that same that same kind of puckered look it just adds much more dimension to the middle now I thought I'd get fancy and actually add another little gob of glue or glue dot to the middle there and then I was going to pinch that and see if that would hold it together in the middle even more now I found that that wasn't totally necessary it was a different way of doing it if you want something that has a deeper more puckered center I don't know if you can see a little bit here. It is a little bit deeper, more puckered center, um, but it absolutely does do that. So now what I'm doing is just adding some art glitter glue to the back just to kind of hold that and keep it from untwisting. Uh, it will just glue the little bits together um, that are touching each other. Now the next thing I'm doing is taking those little scraps. I should have told you at the beginning, don't sweep them in the garbage. They're worth something. <laughs> Take a little bit of multi matte medium or gesso, cover them up and just roll them into a, a little ball. Um, stick them up as best you can. If you've got a tail sticking out, don't worry, you can trim it off with a pair of scissors and then take a pen end or the end of your brush, whatever you got handy, give them a little poke down so that they look like they got a little divot in the middle and you are good to go. So I'm going to take this stamp. It's a background stamp by Penny Black, one of those slapstick ones. I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll see if I can find it and put it on here. And, um, this is Island Indigo by Stampin' Up, and that's a Versafine Smoke Gray. And what I did was stamped off. So I'm leaving a little bit of blue on my stamp, and don't worry, the Versafine, or Versamark, Versafine? Versafine, will not pick it up. What I'm gonna do is just take and give it all a sweep over with my brush. Maybe this does something, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, I chose to do it. But I'm gonna lift it up here, and I'm going to, without cleaning my stamp, do another round two of this. And once I take my gesso and I paint it over top of this ink um, that I've done as the background, you're gonna see why I did this. It's kind of a neat technique. You can also do it uh, spritzing your, 
once it's all dry spritzing your paper with water and you'll get this very cool bleed out it's such a neat effect so one is gonna have more blue bleeding out than the other one and one's been on done on white paper one's been done on cream paper it's not really gonna matter but you can already see as I'm spreading on the gesso how that blue is just kind of sneaking out from underneath that gray ink and how it gives like this old porcelain look you know just like the porcelain on Catherine's desk <laughs> so it gets that old kind of glazed look where it's not got such um, firm pattern to it anymore and that uh, sometimes over time those those colors are all made with different minerals so those minerals will begin to break down and seep through the pottery itself and seep through the glazing and it just gives this really neat look and so you're just right brushing lightly over um, just giving it like a, a really light sweep as though you were trying to do face makeup that wasn't caked on <laughs> if you're trying to do your own makeup you wouldn't want to put a thick layer on just do a thick thin dusting layer you can always go back and add a little bit more if you need to which is what I'm doing here um, the gesso that I use is going to give a kind of a dustier looking white finish it gives a very matte kind of grainy look to it you can also go ahead and use um, white acrylic if you have it the white acrylic is going to have a little bit more of a shine but it's still going to do exactly the same thing and you can see how that um, yummy blue is just bleeding out around that pattern and then once it all dries back it will actually show through um, the gesso paintwork so let's finish up these flowers here I've taken those little uh, centers and I'm gluing them in the middle of my flower now and I'm gonna use my reversible tweezers once I dig them out of the clutter here reversible tweezers and I went ahead and added a yellow center with a tiny bit of green to the blue flowers and then I just took the straight navy color here and I'm painting up the center and then I'm going to just flick in some of those little stamens and this is just a cheapo brush I think it's a dollar store brush don't even worry if you're using expensive brushes with this kind of stuff because you want it looking really rustic it's not gonna matter and if you wanted to you could also um, you know flick in the center a few little dots would look neat too, little tiny dots or if you want to do it more controlled so I'm also adding the tiniest hint of blue around the outside edge so I've got this Stampin' Up um, embossing folder that does planks okay here's the trick emboss it and then spin it around and match it up and emboss it again I tried so hard to make this look like uniform boards and it wouldn't work and I didn't realize that if you use exactly the same end that's what makes it match up now this is the gessoed piece and I'm taking my scissors and I want to rough up the edge and just make it look really kind of chunky and then the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to soften the paper and give it a lot of wrinkles just give it some age and make it look like you know almost like crackled porcelain some something really different and oops I ripped it <laughs> so but that's what scotch tapes for if you rip your stuff make it more kind of shabby chic put a little scotch tape on the back nobody's gonna know the difference and we're not gonna tell Catherine <laughs> if I send her this card she's not gonna know now I also have some ribbon here. I have no idea what kind of ribbon this is, but of course the little magpie that I am, it's different and all shiny shimmery looking and I loved it. And I'm just gonna run a big strip of ATG down the middle. And um, I'm gonna take that and with the middle point, I'm going to stick it down and then I'm just gonna take it and kind of rumple it up or ruche it all the way down. And everywhere that that ATG is, is going to stick and either make a rumple in the ribbon or it will stick it flat down to the card surface itself so i've got that all secured in place i've picked out my flower that looks like the flowers in her curtain and i've made some leaves that i just painted um, on paper and then used a dye i have this ironworks dye from spellbinders and I was messing around with it messing around with it I finally added a hello sentiment took away one of the pieces that I was trying to stick on and put friend there added a bunch of little shiny stones to it and uh, also put some uh, shimmer pen on the flower itself and a little bit on the leaves give you a better view here 
and uh, yeah that's it pulled together that's my homage to Catherine Kelly's craft room and there's another card here that I'm gonna show you and uh, that's with the uh, pink flower and you I will have another video that shows how I put that together and also how to go ahead and pick from your pattern papers to make another card thank you so much for joining me today if you're already a subscriber woohoo thank you and if you're not I sure would love it if you would pretty please leave me a comment give me a thumbs up and have an awesome day thanks bye